Hi, this is the Open Ocean Buddy Locator. The purpose of this project is so that when you're in the ocean, you can find your buddy. So there's a companion right here, this, this guy. So they'll talk to each other. And this little ring will light up. There will be a red light for north and a blue light for where your buddy should be located. It uses a Sony's Presence main board right here. Uh, we're using the GPS with a radio module to communicate to the other to communicate to this guy Boop. so and this presence is also connected to this OLED screen to give some information of uh, the direction also we got the direction here visually and direction numerically here and the distance and this presence is connected to this Arduino Nano it's hard to see it, but it's, you can kind of see it right there. I, I mounted it vertically or on its side. And what the Nano does, it communicates to the NeoPixel ring. And if you can see in there, there's like a little magnetometer. Both of these are from Adafruit. And the reason for the Nano is uh, the NeoPixel said you need like a dedicated, or not a dedicated, like you need like a micro control. So I wasn't too sure if the its presence was going to be um, dedicated enough with running everything else to properly do the NeoPixel ring. Neo Pixel ring. So I went with a Arduino Nano. Um, it's powered by like a RC car battery or RC toy battery and because of that uh, those batteries don't have LiPo protection circuit. I had to, or just for safety I bought one of these little strips of LiPo protection circuit I don't know, it was off Amazon and it's connected to a boost converter that boosts up the 3.7 to 5 volts and that powers everything. Um, what else is there? Um, okay, so some problems I had while working on this project. Um, this presence, it comes with a main board, or it doesn't come with a main board, you can get a main, not a main board, sorry, an extension board to help prototype faster, easier you know it's got the Arduino form factor uh, problems I had with this extension board is the pull-ups on this board are pretty strong they're 1k pull-ups and they always pull the line up super high or I don't say super high but high enough where the radio module couldn't communicate with this presence correctly where the module would try to send zeros over but since the pull-ups on the extension board are so high that the presence always sees a one instead of a zero, so it, it couldn't communicate correctly. Looking at the forums and what people said, they said to put like a little buffer. So I'm using a TTL converter, but I decided to just go straight off the main board because obviously this extension board will take up a lot of real estate in this little box, this little stowaway. It's from Plano, Plano. Um, it's pretty watertight. So yeah, too big, and the 1K pull-ups. Uh, they'll cause some trouble. Uh, some other things that I ran across is um, I just soldered everything up because originally as you can see this is kind of like the prototype I had before everything's just mounted on a breadboard. It worked when I just leave it alone put it on the ground and take the other other module elsewhere and I just leave it on the ground it worked but as soon as I started moving one if I just move these wires just a little, the radio would just go go bonkers. So I had to solder it up to actually get it to work properly where I can move around and see the lights point in the correct direction. So breadboard, not so good. Soldered up. Permanent connection works pretty good. Some other problems I came across came across. I wanted to try and get max distance from this radio module. It's one of those NRF24. Um, I think it has plus P A plus L N A is that that's that's something like power amplifier. Problem with that was it draws a lot of power, so it's hard to see here. Um, well, I already modified this adapter board, but usually uh, people get them with these little adapter boards to to power up the module to regulate the five volts onto three and connect it to the module. It couldn't supply enough current or power. To the radio to the power amplifier when you set the settings to uh, high power ampli 
high power amplification. So again, reading in the forums and what people said on the internet, they said to put a bunch of caps. So I use 100, 10, 1, and 0.1 microfarad on the output of the power regulator on the adapter board. Uh, one more thing I had to do on the output of the boost converter, I also needed to put this 100 microfarad to get it to work properly. I think everything else probably drained the, a lot of power while, while I was running. Another thing, if you notice that this module is wrapped in, the, so this is a bare module, you can see all the circuits. Can't see it here. It's covering a shrink wrap. Shrink wrap is not protected. It's again, uh, look on the internet, what people said you can, you can do to increase the distance is wrap it in saran wrap, put foil, make sure the foil touches one of the grounding points, so like this part here. What that does is it shields it. So instead of using saran wrap, I had a bunch of shrink wrap left over from a fishing pole. That's why you can see this cross. It's a lot thicker than it should be, but eh, it works. I put one layer over, put foil, use copper tape to make sure there was a connection between the connector to, to ground and the foil to be a shield. Then I wrapped it again in one more uh, shrink wrap. So I don't short out anything in here. And that's what this, that's why it's all black and it's covered. Um, other problems I came across was um, getting this OLED to work properly to compile. I'm using the Adafruit libraries. Uh, I forgot what the SDHC or something, I think like 1306 or uh, I'm not sure I don't have the number in front of me, but it's whatever the libraries to get this to work. The SPI library that the Adafruit uses is not the same as a presence, the presence has their own SPI library and it's not compatible. So to get it to compile, all you gotta do is, um, I think in the, there's some kind of graphics drivers library for Adafruit, just remove the SPI, there's like a SPI file in there. You remove that version of whatever they have in it, they will, then it will compile. Oh, and speaking of compiling, I was using Ubuntu trying to compile the NRF drivers and it wouldn't work, I had to like just start hacking away at it and removing um, I guess it was trying to do Linuxy stuff in it and it, it was interfering it was not working properly so uh, I have that in code uh, in my repo it's kind of like a hacked up version of the NRF drivers um, another problem was aside from uh, this guy not properly communicating with this because of the 1K pull-ups, I found that this doesn't communicate with the the magnometer, compass, whatever, whatever you call it. It doesn't communicate properly. I had a generic one at first. You get off eBay. It didn't work with this. I thought maybe, oh, maybe it's just generic. It doesn't work, but it works with the Arduino. I bought, I guess, a real one off Adafruit. I tried to connect it to this presence, and again, it didn't work. Uh, my guess is looking at like a logic analyzer. This is my guess. I'm not sure if it. This is really the problem of why this presence cannot communicate with the magnometers. Is that I looked in the data sheet for the chip that's being used. It said the high time for the clock needs a minimum. I think it was like 4.7 microseconds, nanoseconds. I forgot what it was, but it was like 4.7. Whereas when I Look at what the presence outputted. It was like 4.5. So I think this guy just might be a little bit too fast. I'm not too sure. Whatever it is, this cannot read the magnometer. But the Arduino can. So no biggie. I have to use this little nano Arduino anyway to to work the NeoPixel lights. So works out in the end, I guess. But it would have been nicer if I could try to throw everything on the presence and as little on everything else to show the power of the the presence board here. But and I think I already talked about it before, but I had to put a little LiPo protection because this battery does not have a LiPo protection. Oh, one more. I'm not sure if it's just these board, these LiPo protection boards are cheap. But sometimes when connecting the battery, I think it registers like uh, whatever the under voltage is and then it, it shuts off, not shuts off, it, uh, I guess it kicks in 
and disconnects the battery from the, the booster and then it just doesn't work. Um, maybe if I put a switch but my, my reasoning for not putting a switch is uh, I didn't want to get lazy where you just turn it off and then you forget about your battery. I figure if you unplug your battery you're kind of forced to take your battery out. Um, and then real quick uh, let's see if I can uh, bump the camera turn it on we'll see if it doesn't turn on and then I'll show you a little fix of how to bypass that protection circuit. Oh well it turned on. But if it didn't turn on for whatever reason if the protection kicked in all you have to do is jump the ground wires together and then it works. Um, I think I read online it needs to see that you're trying to charge the battery so you're kind of tricking the, the protection unit into saying yeah it's working I'm charging it correctly then then it resets whatever fuse or I, I don't know how it really worked but it reset it and then it worked. Okay, and then uh, let's see if I can zoom in on the screen so the screen just cycles um, we're indoors so we're not gonna see a it says GPS okay we, we won't see that because uh, I'm not gonna get GPS calm wait means it's it's waiting for the other other module to to turn on and communicate with each other and it says it's waiting for the buddy's GPS let me see if I can turn this guy on and at least get the thing to say radio OK one second so here's the other guy oh can't see it I don't know if you saw it said like calm OK so they're they're communicating with each other I don't want to short anything. There's the other guy. And you can see communication is okay. Which is uh, actually, I'm kind of surprised it's actually working because when you get them too close sometimes, I think just the power is too high and it'll start saying like calm weight, which means they can't communicate with each other. But right now it's actually working pretty good. And yeah, that's it from a project. Uh, seems to work. I took it with my daughters in the field. I have a video of that. Um, straight shot distance, the farthest I went was down my street. It said it was like 150, 160 meters or so. And it, it kept saying calm, okay. It'll, it'll go in and out saying calm, wait. It won't always be like a constant communication. You'll get, I guess, drop packets. But it's pretty good for 150 meters pretty far um, of course when you're standing up you can see the other person that far away, but when you're level with the water seeing that far is going to be pretty hard so I'm hoping that this project will at least me point me to the direction of where my buddy is and then I can start swimming that way and yep that's the project thanks for watching